Oh my, I just looked it up. The high today was 110. Oh, garden's looking pretty good considering it just went through 110. You know, I've got to go water, but I thought of all of you today and I thought, you know what? I'll do a quick video. Ooh, wonder why this needs water? Because it's growing in this little tiny thing. Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California and I'll take you on a little venture as I do a few little things. And I want to talk about something. I want to talk about gardening. Not the way I garden, because I know I've showed you how I garden. And just because I garden that way doesn't mean you're you know, going to garden the same way. I do hope you're gardening something. Even if it's just in a window, you know, a couple of little things. And yes, you can grow in a window. I have started tomatoes and I start a lot of my seeds in the windows, but I've grown tomatoes. Not real successful with tomatoes, but I did end up with peppers. I'm adding in one of the birds have really gone through the water today. So that should focus you. You know what sometimes I do with this one? Give it a good push. Whoa, we all got wet because that makes the water flow and it flushes out any debris that got stuck in the pump that's inside. All right, so let's finish that up. I think right now everything is okay. And I'll shut the water. Let me shut the water off. So we can talk about something I want to talk about today. I want to talk about gardening. In general, let's say you do have a small yard. Let's just talk about a small yard, but if you've got a big yard, it's even better. What hobby and what thing can you get into that even if you fail, oh, gotta come back, or I'll be talking about you. You're not failing. Everything is a win. Everything. Now you're going back saying, what is she talking about? Of course, remember, I will always say this is my opinion. Look around here. That's Lemon Verbena up in the air. These are struggling. Let's say this doesn't grow good, and it's growing small right now because we've been hot for a while and we're gonna be hot for another week. This that's in my hand, as brown as it, as it is, is a win. We are winning by losing, which means we're not losing. Gardening is a win-win. If you stop and sit back, there's nothing should get you upset in the garden. Look how terrible that squash looks. Now it may pop back because the sun just went down and most of them do, but you know what? That squash came up from seed and so far it hasn't produced anything. Does not mean that it won't, but look at that squash. Look how big it is. Look at the leaves, the plant. Look how big the leaves are. See how big the leaves are? You know what I see? I see gold. I see black gold. I take those leaves push them back in there, push them in a tote or a bucket and water them, I end up with my own soil. There is nothing better than your own soil. It doesn't matter if the plant produced. It doesn't matter if it didn't produce. I know that plant. And I know that that plant did, well, grow here in my compost. We do have a little visitor. I don't know if you can see him, but he's sitting on the fence. See him? He's watching me. He's listening to me. He's got plenty of food. I did that before I came out. Isn't that cute? And the thing is, anything that doesn't make it turns in the food. It actually will turn in the food. You can't beat that. I mean, you have a lot of things. Let's say you're raising fish, tropical fish. The fish dies, it dies, you know, and you're out, you don't have anything. But when it comes to gardening, it's all a win-win in so many ways that you may not even be really thinking about, but I am. This plant's pretty much gone. That long plant, I'm gonna turn that into soil. There's nothing better than making your own soil. You know that this year there's been a lot of issues, not just me and I got caught on it too, but a lot of you. What do they call it? Persistent herbicides? In other words, there's companies that go through and they make compost by taking decaying matter. Anything that was once alive can be turned into soil. And that means paper, cardboard, feces, leaves, golf course grass, grass from fancy places. And you know what? Some of those places 
are putting herbicides on there. They're trying to keep the weeds out. By putting chemicals on there, we don't know what kind of chemicals they use. It can even be on citrus trees. You just don't know. I'll take a walk out the gate for a minute too. See all those yellow leaves up there? That's soil. Now you think it's no big deal. It breaks down. Yeah, you got an oleander plant. You break that down. The leaves are good to go in a matter of months and the toxins are gone. I'm using that as an example. Walnut, a few other plants have toxins in it, but they're gone. Mother Nature has provided these trees to drop their leaves and lose that toxin. It doesn't hurt your plants. We don't have to worry about nature. Nature is not the issue when it comes to the soil. It's people. It's people that are, and I'm talking about companies, that are making this stuff. And the problem is some of them, it doesn't go away. And that's a big issue. It doesn't go away. I, I can't even imagine that, having a chemical that could take three years to sometimes go away. Some of them will disappear in a matter of months, and then some of them could take three years. That's scary. Isn't that scary? I have had the best luck with that company. I have not had any. I'm going to say miracle Grow, and this is nothing to do with miracle Grow at all. I'm just telling you because I'm not selling anything. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Mm -mm. I think they test their soil. Uh, and I'm guessing I haven't called them. The issue is the chemicals they're looking for that's causing all these problems can be thousands of dollars to test for. So each batch, and they would have to take multiple testings, would be thousands of dollars. Here we can walk along the wall for a minute. Can you imagine thousands of dollars? Look, I'm getting my chairs pulled out. I'm getting ready to start planting on the chairs. And that's the issue. A lot of these companies won't test because I don't know how much that tests for $1,000. Now, if they've got that pesticide in the soil you bought, you can grow corn. My corn is growing beautiful, but some of the soil I got won't grow. You'll plant the seeds and the plants may grow, but they don't grow right. They're not growing in the stage in which they should be growing. Corn is okay. You have any of that iffy soil? If you don't want to throw it away, set it up in a toter container and grow corn because it's designed to not hurt grass. And it just so happens corn is a type of grass, or I should say it's in the family in which that chemical will not hold back and not let it grow. But squash, tomatoes, they struggle with it. I think what I'm trying to say is how exciting is it that you can make your own soil with stuff that doesn't make it? So if you've got a plant that you planted and the plant doesn't make it, don't sit there and cry, oh my gosh, the plant's got, no, cheer. So guess what? The plant is now gonna be your soil to grow something else. I know you can't see it. There's a little bird sitting there watching me too. I think they're all interested in this. You see that? Looks like a little toey. I think it's a toey. How funny, I'm just sitting there, sitting on my irrigation tubing I now use and all over the gardens and using it more and more. Oh my gosh, that, that's a lifesaver and a half. I've got my watermelon starting to grow. Ooh, you know, I put a video out on that and guess what? The other ones took off too. Gee, those cuttings work. Next year, this is gonna be really good because next year I'll start a bunch of watermelon. As soon as they set, I'll be taking trimmings off right away. Normally my trimmings were turning in the soil. Now I'm gonna turn my trimmings in the plants. Anything that's brown, like here's the beans, they're not doing that well because of the heat, but they're still growing and I've got flowers and stuff on there. This is all gonna be my soil. I know my soil is good because this leaf hasn't been sprayed. I use no pesticides at all. I don't need to, I don't need to use pesticides. Zero pesticides, nada, nothing. The only pesticides 
or the Orioles that come in, and you just saw the towie, that come in and look for insects. That's nature's. They're coming in and doing their thing, and that's food for them. So we've got a cycle going on here that we've turned our garden and this little piece of land that's in the city into a real paradise for animals. Wasn't intentional, but it happened. I think it's fantastic. I think we have to step back and think, let's get gardening. Let's take our kids outside and garden and tell them anything that doesn't grow, we cheer and say, yay, we're making our own soil. You know I'm, I'm doing pictures now and I'm loading that up with leaves and different things, right? And there's that shoot that's coming up from the roots. This one's got one too now. You can pull that picture out well, let's say in about two weeks, if you want, you don't have to, and you can put it in a flower pot. And now you've got the richest soil you can add anything to. You've made your own soil. You've made your soil that your plants are gonna to wanna to grow in. Let's walk over here for a minute. You wanna see something else that's exciting? This. I'm growing all this, this is all turmeric. That's all that's growing is turmeric in here. And all that turmeric is growing in this. They said it could not be done. Well, don't tell them that. That is the turmeric, don't tell them. I thought if all these leaves are just piling and falling everywhere on the chair back there, my little junk pile back here, and just falling and falling, and it's getting wet and it kind of holds water and it drains really good. I mean, we have clay soil. You can't grow a thing in plain clay because it just holds the water and it drowns the plants. They want water. You can water the dickens out of your plants. You can water as much as you want. You can't really overwater plants as long as it drains. They don't want to sit in water, but they love water. That's leaves. I made my own soil by just coming out here one day grabbing a bunch of pots, I've got the video on that, and raking up the ground, picking all the leaves off that this pepper tree dropped. Somebody said, well, I thought they're toxic. I don't know if they're toxic. I know that nothing grows under the pepper tree. I don't know. I don't know why not. It might be something given off on the roots, but it doesn't matter. The turmeric's growing, and I will be using a lot of this because not only is this going to save me money, you know, soil... A bag of soil, one cubic foot, could cost you anywhere from seven. Well, I can't even give you that amount. Seven to, it could be $30, depending on the brand. When you go organic, they get really expensive. And there's nothing wrong with that. You want to buy the soil, you buy the soil. But I make my own. You've seen how I load up the totes. I've got tons of videos on that. Just load them up. On the bottom, you don't want to put like clay. My soil is hard rock clay. You know I put that because it'll block up the holes. And sometimes I've done it in the past and forgotten. I just make bigger holes. Or I take the soil out that's around the holes and start over just around the holes. You want to put a lot of sticks and twigs and leaves and stuff like that on the bottom. And then put your shredded paper. You know the junk mail that came that you don't want? That's in your shredder? I put that in there. And then kitchen scraps, leaves, anything from the garden, I put that in there. And then what I do use potting soil for, and I don't use it all the time, I may not be using that much next year, is I put that on the top about that much. So the plants have a good start in something, something. But once you've got totes all over, you can go back to another tote and use that soil that already broke down and put that on the top. You won't need potting soil at all. It's broken down matter, it's compost, that you made before. Now, the, what I'm going to do different coming this year, I'm doing it right away, is I'm going to start setting up totes. No, I didn't set those up yet. And I don't have to think about, I have a habit of thinking, oh my gosh, I've got a tote, I've got to go plant in it. Oh, look, it's empty, I have to plant in it. Uh, see that gray toad in the middle? There's nothing in there. That one? Nothing. See the line that, 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 whoops, I'm making it go blurry. Let's see that. That's a squash growing from the top tote down into the other one. And that tote has nothing in it. I have to stop telling myself I have to plant something right away. I have to stop that. It's something I do. 
don't do that. Leave it empty. That means no plants, but I treat the tote as if something is growing in it. I don't have to cover it. I'm covering some seedlings in there. Just go by and make sure you water it. Now, if you don't have plants in there, you only have to water it once every few days. But the reason you do that, and the reason I'm gonna do that, is when I do want that soil just for the top of something, maybe for some seeds, I can go back and dig the dickens out of it. You're gonna go back I'll show you what I've done. We're gonna come back, you're gonna be surprised what I did. Cause I've been surprised with the heat. I'm not ready to put this video up yet. But you're gonna go back and depending on your weather, it could, be, it could be weeks or months and you're gonna go back and find the richest soil. Can you grow in it right away? Yes, you can. I know they told you you can't. They've told me I can't. There's a lot of stuff they told me you can't do and you can't. The reason I'm saying don't plant in it is because I have this habit, because it's there, I have to plant in it. I have to put a plant, no, you don't. You can put a plant on top in a flower pot. And that flower pot with the plant on top just sitting there will love you for it. Oh my gosh, there's something about the microbes and everything going up and down. And you just set a pot in there and I do a lot of cuttings that way. I did fig trees that way, put it in some little pots and just sat it on top after I set up the compost and started throwing leaves in there, just sat it on top and they rooted so good. So think about gardening and don't worry. You know, a lot of people in some places take all their old seeds they're never gonna plant, they plant them, they just throw them somewhere and they let them grow and then they dig them under, they call it green manure. Why? Because it's their own compost, their own plants. They're digging it back and they're creating their own soil. Soil that plants want to grow in. So I just thought I'd talk about that for a minute because it's an exciting, if you want to call it a hobby, you know, prices are going up. Why not grow some stuff? Try stuff. And the seeds that you buy, go to Walmart, the dollar stores, you can pick up seeds there. You don't like the plant? Compost it in. You made yourself free soil with the, or you made yourself soil with the pennies you paid for the seeds. You don't have to get expensive seeds. And then once you have your own plant, you can collect your own seeds and do the same thing. It's a wonderful hobby. It's absolutely wonderful. And then when you try testing some seeds and if they grow really good, you're going to make sure you label that and keep those seeds. If the seeds you kept don't grow good, use that to make your soil. If there's times you don't want to grow something, you throw the seeds in there, let them grow as you're composting, and push them back in, make your own soil. I mean, this is like gardening is a win-win. There's no losing. It's a win-win. It doesn't grow, you made soil. So what are you doing? Tell your friends, I don't know how to garden, I'm making soil. Tell them that, and then you won't feel bad if something doesn't make it and the plant dies back. Wouldn't that be funny? They'll think you're crazy. How is your gardening going? You could say you have a black thumb. Doesn't matter. Oh, doesn't matter. I'm making soil. That's what you're doing. You're making soil. Making soil is fantastic. Anyways, if I don't click this camera off and start doing what I need to do. I'll be making more soil than I want to make because right now, like I said, we hit 110 today. It was really hot. There's my watermelon. And I need a water. I didn't water since last night. I've got a watermelon there and another one, as you can see back there. That's a big one. See how big that one is? That's heavy. So I'm going to go not make soil tonight, hopefully. But all this, I pick this all the time and I tell you, don't do this because they're, ouch, they're spiky. This is my next soil. If you don't have a place to put this, drop it right where you picked it and it will just dry up in a matter of days and crumble into the ground or your tote, your bag, your grow bag, wherever you're growing in buckets. Here I don't grow in grow bags. I have one thing growing in a grow bag and that's peppers way down there. I tried a second one, I couldn't get them to grow the peppers, I don't know because we're just too dry and that's the problem. But you know, we do better in container gardening as far as totes. Totes are plastic. They have to have drainage. They're cheap. You can get them sometimes on sale for $5, but the big price is $7, $6.98. Walmart's got them, Target's got them. You can find them anywhere. They retain water 
as far as not evaporating out through the sides. The only place it can evaporate is the top. One place to evaporate. When you have other containers, you're growing a material, it's evaporating all the way around, including if you have it on the ground, on the bottom, because this, the ground will pull the water out. So you've got evaporation everywhere. Here in California, where we're hot, it only can evaporate off the top. And if you're layering, there's pots in here. See, I've got pots. It can't evaporate there. It can evaporate up on top but it can't evaporate underneath where it's sitting. So that pot holds water. So there's all kinds of little tricks we can do to keep water in there, especially when you're in the desert or a place that's super hot. Can we trick mother nature? Maybe, maybe let's say we can fool her a little bit. Oh, that's right. That commercial said you can't fool mother nature. Well, maybe she's just going along with us and lets us do it because we can help retain water. We can make life easier and we can sit back and smile because no matter what happens in the garden, whether they grow or they don't grow, you're either going to have soil or you're going to have food. It's okay. It's a win-win hobby. So like I said, I better grab that hose and do my zip around after 110 and some of you have said to me, how in the world, you've been up 100 degrees now for about a week. We have another week. How is this still green? Everything died. Quickly, I water at night. I put the hose on the bottom. I don't water the leaves ever during the day because once you wet it and the sun is out and it's hot, it will fry and cook the plants. And by growing in totes or plastic containers that retains water, and then different ways you can put the holes. As you can see there, I put the holes about one to two inches up. It will retain a little reservoir of water underneath. And you think, oh, it's going to go rancid. No, it's going to go up. The plants are going to use it. Rancid? Oh, they love that. So there's different ways. It depends on where you're living, how much water you have as far as rain. You've got a lot of rain, put the holes closer to the bottom. If you're very dry all the time, put the holes a little bit up. But you have to have drainage because you never want your entire container to fill with water. So now I know I have talked too much because I, oh my God, my tomatoes. I have to go water everything to keep everything happy and healthy. Oh, what a beautiful group of colors. Red, orange, yellow, and green. Is that cool? Don't worry, they're all gonna be red. It's just a slow process. It's beautiful. So don't be upset if something dies back. I had a tomato plant die back in there. I just crushed it into the tote and all is good and everything is keeps growing and I've got celery now growing in there. So I hope I gave you some thought on why gardening is so much fun. Because you can't lose. You can't say I failed. How could you fail? You made soil. So you can't fail. All you can do is be successful. So with that, have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.